All right, it's time now for some of the other stories that uh, caught our attention this week. So, Noel, I'm going to start with you. Okay. What did well, you see? Well, everybody's been watching the Trayvon Martin trial in Florida. Apparently, he's going to the jury. Um, I'll be glad when this thing's over. I mean, I can't for the life of me figure out how this became yet another battle in our political divide. I mean, it's been the, you know, the darling of, of cable talk shows and you got folks on the right and folks on the left thinking that this is going to determine the political outcome of the country. <laughs> it's been absurd. That poor jury has a very tough case to consider and you know I think we should let them consider it and, and, and go with what they decide. I think it's always fascinating when you have these cases that play out on cable television. Yeah. Everyone instantly becomes a lawyer, mm -hmm. and they're you know very good with right. the evidence sitting right. at home. Right, and and you know as Nolan points out, it's become this big political battle. I mean, what you have here is an unarmed kid killed by a vigilante. It seems to me like a pretty straightforward. You know, we can't do it, but uh, but it's also now a symbol of you know, race and class and all these other things that I think but get in the way of the, the sort of essence of what but, happened. But this jury has to deal with a Florida law that's not like any laws we're used to in, in Michigan. And I think people have to people appreciate what the, this jury is up against. I mean, they've got to weigh the evidence based on the Florida law. Mm -hmm. And I think the outcome is going to uh, confuse a lot of folks. All right. Well, Stephen, what did you uh, what did you see this week? I have week? the uh, latest Pure Michigan uh, ad. Uh, the FBI statistics oh, uh, no. suggest that uh, we have four cities on the top ten list of uh, most violent cities in America. So, what are they, Steve? Tourist spots: uh, Flint, Saginaw, Detroit, and Inkster, which I think is probably new on that list. The Inkster. other three are always on. Uh, all right. Well, my, my headlines were a little bit of a political roundup. A couple things that I saw coming out. Um, Gary Peters has raised about a million bucks for his, uh, his Senate run. Um, also, Roll Call is calling the governor's race a toss-up now, between uh, now that Mark Showers is in the race. We can talk about that. And the last thing <laughs> on the political agenda, I know Nolan loves this, the last thing is um, the Motor City Madman is even madder more. He's thinking about running for president. There Little Ted go. Nuge for president, what do you think? That liven things up, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did you think about, what did you think about the roll call thing? Well, I mean, they've obviously been reading the PPP polls, which are, are about useless. I don't think um, Rick Snyder's got a whole lot to worry about from Mark Schauer. Again, it would be very unusual for an incumbent governor to be defeated in a rising economy. And Michigan's economy continues to outpace the nation and is expected to do so through next year. I, I, it's hard to imagine voters going to the polls and saying, wow, things are a lot better than they were four years ago. Let's change. Ted Nugent for president? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to vote. I'm sure no one will vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the governor's race, is they're saying it's a toss-up. It's not about Mark Schauer. It is about... Uh, Rick Snyder, whose numbers still are very soft. Uh, if the Democrats had a had a uh, more recognizable candidate, I think they would have a, a better shot at uh, at knocking him off. But we'll see. Mark Schauer could turn into that candidate. Nobody knew who Rick Snyder was in the fall of uh, 2009. Well, there's a lot of time. There's a lot of time for things to be done or or not accomplished. So you know, I went out one time. We we hired Ted Nugent as a um, columnist. <laughs> and I had to go out to a Jackson <gasps> compound and talk to him. No. And he's sitting at his desk, and behind him are all these knives, <laughs> machetes, sabers, a whole wall. Got a lot of, of weapons, right? <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And he called me the banker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. My feelings. Uh, oh, come on. And so, you, so how long was the meeting? <laughs> you know, it was long enough. But, <laughs> and he actually wrote for us for a, for a, a number of, uh, quite a long time. Motor City Madman. Good story, Nolan. Thanks, guys, so much. And